Hey guys, Steph, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. So in today's video, we are filming one of my most favorite types of videos to film, where I'm just sharing with you guys a whole ton of dupes that I found for some of my most favorite high-end products. I'm talking Tatcha, Charlotte Tilbury, Nars, Becca, Fenty. Like there's a lot of bougie products, but the dupes, they are affordable, they are easy to get, and they are so, so good. Like, I kind of feel like I've outdone myself in this one because I have found so many good dupes. I do have a couple of products that I am gonna be trying out with you guys today for the first time. I literally just picked them up earlier today. But yeah, I'm excited about this one. Like I've tried out a lot of these dupes and like I said, I feel like they're pretty damn good, but I haven't tried them out all together. So I'm very interested to see how like one side of my face will look compared to the budget side. But yeah, if you guys do like videos like this, then just let me know because I have so many different ideas for videos like this. I honestly have a diary of like so many different dupes. And while you're here, if you haven't already, because only half of my audience that actually watch my videos are subscribed, press that button, turn on notifications, do all the things. Okay, now let's actually get into the video. Let's go. <laughs> Look at these cute clips I got from Primark the other day. And no, I'm not naked. Remember when there was like a trend of people just in my comments all the time, like, are you naked again? Not today. So first of all, I'm gonna do my brows. You guys know I love the fluffy brow look and I'm still working on finding some dupes for the Brow Freeze and the Refi Gel. But a product that I have always loved is the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. This comes in at 23 pounds. It is not cheap, it is so, so good though. But a dupe that I found for that is this guy from NYX. This is the NYX uh, Brow Glue and this comes in around about seven pounds. And as you can see, it's not a dupe in terms of like the packaging or anything like that. It is more so just down to the actual formula of the product. So the brow setter is quite sticky and dries down quite solid, which I personally like because you guys know my brows have like their own postcode. And yeah, this has always been one of my favorite brow gels. I've loved it for years, whether I've just been doing like a natural brow or something a bit more fluffy. You can also do really kind of like laminated style brows because they've got like a bit of a a flat side to the wand. Then I'm gonna go in with the NYX side and I don't know if you can necessarily tell, it's actually kind of gross but satisfying. It's like, it's literally like stringy. This isn't just a clear gel that's not gonna do anything to your brows. I actually really, really love this NYX one because I feel like, I know some people might not like this, but I feel like it makes my brows a bit more shiny and I kind of like it when my eyebrows are just like, Ding. One thing I will say with both of these products though is if you want to pencil in your brows or anything, I would recommend doing that first and doing this as like your last step of your brows because you're gonna have a fun time trying to get through the shield of glue if you try and do anything after. So that's like your last step. Next for primer is this one from Tatcha, the Silk Canvas Primer and then the Elf Putty one. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I do prefer the Tatcha one. I fully, fully love this stuff. But this stuff comes in at... <laughs> 64 pounds. I was gonna put it all over my face then. I need to do one side. Honestly, I use this stuff most days when I do my makeup and it, it honestly is worth the hype. It's not easy to get hold of either. Like I think I know of one website that I'll list down below that actually stocks this in the UK. So Tatcha, please, please come to the UK. But if you guys either can't get your hands on Tatcha or you do just want an affordable dupe, we have the e.l.f. Putty Primer. Now I have tried this out multiple times and I kept forgetting about it, but actually, again, this is really, really nice. I thought it was gonna be, very, I'm taking too much product. I'm literally taking enough of my whole face, but I always thought this was just gonna be kind of like a poor filling matte primer, but it actually does feel very, very similar. It does leave a little bit more of a residue on the skin. I feel like the touch of one does sink into the skin a lot more, but I also kind of don't mind that. But yeah, obsessed with both of those. Like I'm using this one a bit more sparingly now that I've rediscovered the e.l.f. one. But honestly, it, it actually is pretty similar. It doesn't have a scent either. So if scents bother you, then this could be a good shout. Like it's actually really, really good and similar. So next I'm gonna go in with foundation. Now, as you can see, this is a completely unopened box of the number seven Beautifully Matte Foundation, but apparently it is a really, really good dupe for this Fenty one. I'm not gonna lie. I never use this Fenty foundation. I feel like it is just a bit too heavy and just thick and matte for me. But I know so many people love it. Like even the pump stuck because I haven't used it in so long. I don't know how this color is gonna be on me. It's shade 290. I really haven't used this in the longest time, but I'm just gonna pop that all over my skin. Honestly, it's so full coverage. Like, look at that. <laughs> it's insane. Just get right up in there. And this retails for, what was it? I had it all written down. This retails for 27 pounds. 
So now we're gonna be trying out this potential dupe here. This is the number seven beautifully matte foundation. It says coverage medium to full, all day velvet, matte perfection, oil free SPF 15. And again, this may well be too dark for me. They only had this color or something way too light for me. But from what I could see swatching it in the shop, it wasn't, it was like a closer undertone. So I can always add my lightening drops if I need to. <laughs> okay, before this gets problematic, I need to, yeah, lightening drops. Okay, right, I'm gonna just use my face as the palette for a minute and just uh, mix that around. Okay, I'll do that for a second. I, this is not a good match. Okay, but I'm gonna try and ignore that. And I am also gonna lighten it more, so please don't come for me in the comments. But I'm just gonna get this blended out onto my face. This is heavy. This is heavy. Ooh, ignore the color for a second. I've got like, Oh God, I've got lightning drops all over me here. This is definitely a lot heavier than Fenty, which I thought Fenty was like one of my more heavier foundations, but this is almost like double wear kind of territory, but even more matte. That's really, really intense. That is, I'm not sure how to feel about that. I don't get me wrong. I'm like that. I don't think I like that. I appreciate the coverage I'm getting and I know that some people really, really like that, but for me, it's just too heavy around here. And I took like half a pump to do half my face. And honestly, I could have gone with like a quarter of that amount really, cause it is, it's thick. It's got a lot of coverage. Um, so if you like that, you might like this, but it it's too much for me. I feel like I just had an out of body experience then like, oh my God, stuff from like 2018 would be so disappointed. I'm literally here, like too much coverage. The more I look at it, the more I do kind of get why people say it's a dupe for the Fenty one. Cause actually in regards to how much money you're saving, cause the um, number seven one, by the way, is 15 pounds. It, it really isn't that far off. Like if you just used a little bit less or mixed it in with a little teeny tiny bit of moisturizer just to make it a little bit less intense, I feel like it would actually be pretty similar. Um, this just has more coverage and I feel like it's just gonna look a lot thicker. Where's my clip gone? I had a clip. I said clip, not clip. Next up, we have Tarte Shape Tape, which as you all know, is like one of my most favorite concealers ever, ever, ever. And to go with that, I'm gonna be using this one from Rimmel. Now, so many of you said that this was a dupe and I've tried this out a couple of times, but again, not like next to the Tarte one. And I do get it. I mean, you can see the packaging is so, so similar. But yeah, I'm very interested to see how these look next to each other. Again, I might not have the right colors that match, but It'll be close enough. So I'm going in with Tarte on this side, just like so. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go down my nose with the Tarte one a little bit. I'm gonna go over a couple of little spots that I may have squeezed earlier. Don't tell anyone. And I'm also gonna go over my lid with this, which I know sometimes makes people just want to reach through the screen and bop me on the head. But I, I love using the Tarte Shape Tape as a eye primer. So I wanna see how the Rimmel one works as well. And in regards to price, the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer comes in at 24 pounds and the Rimmel one comes in at around about eight. All right, let's try the Rimmel one. I'm gonna use the same sort of amount and then cover up some of these spots as well. I do have another concealer to try out. So I think I am just gonna be a cake face today, to be honest. I'm using these sponges from a brand called Beauty Gloop and interesting name, but they're really nice. They're like the microfibery sort of ones and yeah, I'm into it. See, I do quite like the Rimmel one, but for me, the Tarte one just looks a lot more natural. I feel like the Rimmel one looks a little bit more matte, a little bit thicker. I'll make sure to add in macro clips so you guys can see close up how they both look as like a comparison. But I do just feel like the Tarte one is just a lot more glowy. It's a lot more movable. Like this one is just kind of like in a set and that's it. Whereas the Tarte one, if you don't really powder it down, it does just kind of allow a little bit of movement under your eye. And I I honestly do prefer the Tarte one, but the Rimmel one does give a similar effect and it obviously is a lot cheaper. I do feel like the Rimmel one has given me more coverage though. Do you agree? Like I do prefer this side, but I do feel like the Rimmel one's giving me a bit more coverage. So next, even though my face is already like resembling a Victoria sponge, we're gonna go for a little bit more coverage, you know, just to be sure. So I have the Glossier, uh, what is this called? The Stretch Concealer. And another new product I'm trying out today is the Stretch Concealer and Eyeshadow Primer. 
Should have read that before I primed my eyes, but this is from Collection. Haven't tried this, haven't swatched this, think it's only been around for a little while because I only saw it recently. Um, but I have this in the shade Cashew and this one in G10. Okay, so the colors look all right. I remember when I first tried out the Glossier one and I was actually really pleasantly surprised because it's a lot more like of a gel consistency than anything else. I don't really know where I'm gonna put this. I don't know if it's gonna be the right color. Uh, where can we put this? Maybe a little bit here. I'm running out of rooms to cover guys, all right? I've got like, I've already covered my face with 50 layers of other stuff, but I'm gonna go a little bit down here. And I'm gonna flip the brush and go in with the collection one. So haven't tried this at all. The consistency seems pretty similar. I think I prefer, ooh, this one seems to have more coverage. I took quite a similar amount of product. And again, I try and ignore the slight color difference. I'll be honest, I wasn't interested in this at all. You guys know, I don't really like pot concealers. Like I like this, but honestly, I just don't gravitate to something in a pot. I would normally just rather use like a doe foot. But I am very, very intrigued. Hmm. I actually think the collection one has more coverage and I feel like the Glossier one is a little bit more like of an emollient, which probably gives me a bit more of a sheen here. Don't get me wrong, this could all go tits up by the time we have some powder on here, but it's actually, it actually looks pretty similar. And just for reference as well, the Glossier one costs 15 pounds and the collection one costs just under four pounds. So this one's really, really cheap. I actually like this a lot. Next is something I'm only gonna touch on very, very quickly because I actually think this has been discontinued, but just in case some of you have it or like you have it and you've forgotten about it, I wanted to show you guys how it compares to the Charlotte Tilbury one. So yeah, this is the Beauty Pie Quick Color Contour Super Gel and it is so, so similar to the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. I get a lot of requests for trying out Beauty Pie makeup. I have done a video like years ago in my old house. So let me know if you guys want me to do like an updated one because I think they have launched like a bunch of new products. But this was one of my most favorite products from them. So I do hope they bring it back. I think they've got like different packaging for a lot of stuff. It blends out so nicely. And I mean, obviously it looks pretty intense at first, but it just gives you a really, really subtle kind of shadow effect. And I'm not 100% sure because I couldn't find it online, but I'm pretty sure this retail for like six or seven pounds if you're a Beauty Pie member. If you guys don't know about Beauty Pie, it's basically just like a membership thing and you get, how do I explain this in the easiest way? Basically Beauty Pie get the exact same products from the same labs as like high-end companies like Charlotte Tilbury and they use the product, but just in like stand packaging and yeah, it's just a lot cheaper. But yeah, I was looking on the website earlier to find that product and they had a bunch of stuff that I hadn't seen yet. So yeah, let me know if you wanna see that cause I basically just want you guys to say yes so I can just go and buy a whole load of Beauty Pie makeup and try it. So please, please say yes, thank you. <laughs> but like, yeah, look, it gives the same effect. I hope you can still get it or I hope you can get it eventually again, like Beauty Pie, if you come across this video by any chance please bring it back in some shape or form because honestly, this was like my favorite product ever. So now for powder, I have this very bougie one from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Flawless Powder and I have it in the shade Fair Pale. The other one I do have in Translucent, but hopefully it shouldn't make too much of a difference. But yeah, I've got everything written down on my phone and this powder retails for 35 pounds. And then I saw this one from number seven. And again, I've heard a couple of things and apparently this is very, very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury powder, but this is actually called the Airbrush Away Finishing Powder. So it's even got like a similar name. And actually looking at the colors, like this one says it's translucent, but they both look pretty similar. And this one, by the way, retails for 13 pounds. So I'm gonna turn to the macro. Hello there. And I'm gonna make sure I dust off my brush and everything in between, but I'm just gonna set down my under eyes and make sure there's no creasing and lightly set my under eyes first. I don't mind the Charlotte Tilbury powder, but I hear so many people raving about it and I don't understand it to that extent, but I do quite like it. Then I'm gonna go in with a big fluffy brush. So I'm just gonna do my use. Then I'm gonna dust this brush off as much as I can, just to prove you that I ain't cheating. And we'll go in with this one, okay. There's already less kickback, which is just interesting, you know? Doesn't really mean much, but it's just interesting to know. Hmm, I'm going quiet, that means I'm thinking. Doesn't happen very often, both the being quiet and the thinking. That isn't a bad dupe, to be fair. Like obviously it's a little bit tricky to tell because I am wearing totally different makeup on each side, but 
it does all look quite similar still. I don't know, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of sheen from both sides. It doesn't look too matte. It hasn't made anything look overly cakey. Huh. Yeah, I mean, these aren't necessarily my new favorite powders, but I get it. That's actually, like they are actually very, very similar. And yeah, you're gonna save like 20 quid if you buy the number seven one. So I'm very, I'm actually really curious about that powder. I don't really know what I was expecting from that, but I'm very, very impressed. So that was all of the new products that I haven't tried out yet. So everything else from now on are products that I'm honestly telling you right now, they are such good dupes for the high-end version. So next up is this bronzer here from Charlotte Tilbury. This again is one of the bougiest bronzers I probably own. This costs 39 pounds. And this one doesn't look that good right now because it's the one that I used in the TikTok hacks video where I basically put setting spray on it and kind of ruined it a little bit. But the back to bronze from L'Oreal, I, when you swatch them both next to each other, they honestly do look so similar. I don't know why I swatched them with like, <laughs> this is the Charlotte Tilbury one, this is the L'Oreal one, but they're very, very subtle. I would say, I've even confused myself now. I would say the Charlotte Tilbury one is slightly more neutral, but again, I actually feel like I do kind of prefer the L'Oreal one because I like a little bit of warmth. So I'm just gonna warm my face up with that. So yeah, you can see this one is quite a neutral bronzer. Like I could definitely contour with this. I'm just gonna make sure I dust off my brush. And then I'm gonna go in with the L'Oreal one. So I need to dig in this one a little bit more just cause obviously I sprayed it with setting spray and ruined it a little bit, but it still works fine. But yeah, I'm just gonna pop some of that in the same place. And yeah, I just feel like this one is just a touch warmer. I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury one isn't too matte either. And the L'Oreal one kind of has a little bit of a sheen to it as well. So I think that's why you kind of get more of like a healthy glow from them both. Honestly, it's no shade on the expensive products because I really, really love them. That's why I found dupes for them. Um, it's just more affordable. Next, let's talk highlighter. I was, again, pat on the back for me here. I only bought this recently, but I wanted this for so, so long. This is from Becca and it's one of their shimmering skin perfectors, but it's in the shade Moonstone. And I, I didn't even realize this until I bought it. I got it from TK Maxx. It has a little rat. Look, it's got a rat in the pan. And we call Michael and Pepe rats. Ollie and I call each other rats. And I, we just like rats. So I find that kind of funny. It was for the year of the rat. But this is one of the most popular highlights from Becca. It is stunning. And if you guys don't know, we are saying goodbye to Becca. Um, basically the brand is kind of like dissolving, I think, and soon it's gonna be no more. But apparently Smashbox are taking on some of the products and like selling them on the website. I don't know if like they're gonna be branded as Smashbox products or just like a separate bit on the website for Becca, I have no idea. But either way, if you struggle to get hold of this or if you wanna save some money, the highlighter that I found that dupes this really, really well is this one from Rimmel. And it's just called the Highlight. And this one here is in the shade Stardust number one. They are so, so similar. I feel like the Rimmel one is ever so slightly more metallic, but I actually kind of feel like I prefer that. I never thought, like Becca do some of my most favorite highlights for me as ever. And I never really thought I'd be saying, yeah, I prefer a Rimmel highlighter to the Becca one, but I actually kind of do in this instance. So we're gonna take the highlighter with the rat on it and pop that up there. Let me get this hair out of my face. And like I said, I got that one from TK Maxx. I think I got it for like 15 pounds or something, but normally these highlighters retail for 30 pounds. And the Rimmel one, it's eight quid. It's just eight pounds. I mean, the Becca one, is kind of popping though. My clip's just like running away from my head right now, but the Becca one is really, really nice. But the Rimmel one is also very, very, very nice. So again, I'm just gonna use the same brush that I just dusted off. It's like, it's a bit more metallic, but especially on the skin, like the swatches look ever so slightly different on my hand, but on the skin, it really, does give a similar effect. I was really impressed by the Rimmel highlighters. Honestly, if you see this in store, give it a swatch, because I think testers are now coming back into stores like literally any day now. So if you do see this, give it a swatch, because it is intense. I'm gonna use it in the center of my face as well, just because I'm not about to try and do like half of the tip of my nose on this side. No, actually I will. I'll, I'll, I will try. Right, let's do the tiniest bit there, tiniest bit there. Give me like a weird, weird tip to my nose. Okay, look, you want me to be really fair? There you go. Pretty. Don't get me wrong, 
I really love the rat on this. I think that instantly adds a lot of value to the product, but if you ain't fussed on the rat, the Rimmel one is so similar. I wonder how many times I've said that in the video going, it's so similar. Of course it is. I'm doing a dupes video. If they weren't similar, that would be stupid. <laughs> Next are two products that I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about. Freck, which is the most expensive thing in the whole world, pretty much, in terms of like milliliters or whatever, but I love it so much and I will continue to buy it. And this retails for, what even was it? I hate even thinking about it, 25 pounds. Oh God, like, am I actually okay? Honestly, I, I don't even care. I love this stuff so much. I do really love it. And then to go along with that, the best tube that I found for Freck in terms of like the way you apply it, everything like that, is of course the Lottie London one. And this one retails, I keep forgetting all the prices, seven pounds. So this one, a, a lot cheaper than the Freck. And I will say, I do think you get more of a natural result with the Freck um, pen. But again, if you just apply this quite sparingly, you can get like, no one's gonna notice. Let's be real here. Is anyone gonna go up to you and go, your fake freckles, hmm, they look slightly different to how they did yesterday when you were using that expensive product. Like, it, no one's really gonna know. They'll never know. How would they know? I feel the Lottie London one is a little bit warmer, like the Freck one, especially when it dries down, it goes a lot more neutral. I think it's actually supposed to work with your skin tone. So that's probably one of the main differences. But again, you're drawing teeny tiny little dots on your face. Is anyone gonna notice? If they do, they're probably way too close to your face. Another really good option um, that I actually do use all the time as well is the misguided um, freckle tint pen. I'm like running out of my words right now. I've been talking a lot. I'm gonna leave that down below. The misguided one is another one of my faves. Next, I have a dupe for everyone's favorite blusher, Nars Orgasm. This is probably like the most famous blusher ever, but it is from Sleek and like, can we just appreciate there we go, how similar they are. Sleek actually used to do one in like pretty much the exact same packaging as NARS. And then Sleek had that big kind of revamp. They bought out a ton of new products. And I think these have only been out for a couple of months now, but this one here is in the shade feeling like a snack. And before I even saw the shade, when I saw the packaging, I was like, I wonder if they're gonna bring back that dupe. And honestly, <laughs> saying it again, but they are so freaking similar. It's actually nuts. The NARS one comes in at 26 pounds and the Sleek one comes in at just five pounds and I literally just bought this the other day and they had an offer on that was like spend 11 pounds, which I literally got this and then a powder and a brow product, spent like 13 quid and I got a free eyeshadow palette. So just a heads up, like if there's anything more from Sleek, then they have like a big offer on in boots. I will say the main downside to the Sleek one is you tap your brush in there and there is a lot of fallout, so it is a bit more messy but they apply really nicely on the skin. Like, I feel like it is just the same kind of formula that they used to have, which I used to love the sleep blushes. I mean, you can see it goes on the skin really nicely. It's got a nice little sheen as well from the Gold Flex. And then I'll take the other side of the brush for the NARS one and just do the same on this side. I feel like the NARS one takes a bit more building up, which I actually do kind of prefer a bit more because you guys know me, I am terrified of like having color in my face. So I'd say the NARS one is a bit softer, a little bit more natural, but all you gotta do for the sleek one is use a light hand and like they look the same. Next we'll move on to eyes and I'm not gonna lie, unless you go for like obvious dupes from like Revolution and stuff, it's not the easiest thing to find a completely copied eyeshadow palette. I know um, W7 do a lot of different like dupes of things. Like I was gonna try and get my hands on the Stacey Marie Dupe. It's called like the Mardi Gras palette or something. Let me know if you want me to like dupe those two. But I was looking through my makeup collection and I came across this palette again and I really, really love this. But the issue with this, it's the Melt Cosmetics Smoke Sessions palette, by the way, is it costs 40 pounds. And I feel like it's only really these colors here that draw me to the palette. Like, don't get me wrong, very nice shades. I love all of this palette, but it's it's these shades that are a little bit different. And as you guys will have probably seen in one of my recent first impressions, I used the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette, which looks like this, and I was obsessed with it. And if I compare the two, but I would say the most standout shades from the Melt palette are pretty much the same as what is in the Wilderness palette and you get all of these extras. The only color that you're slightly missing out on is this one here. But I would actually kind of say if you just paired those two shades together, it would just give you a very, very similar effect. But like Space Queen looks very similar to Ivy. Mean Green looks very similar to Moss. Uh, Sweet Tooth looks similar to Breeze. 
And then obviously in the Wilderness palette, you do have some neutral shades as well. Like you could probably make that color by mixing those two together or something. Like I said, it's not a total, total dupe, but if you want this palette, for like these colors, you can get them from the Beauty Bay Wilderness palette. And this retails for 40 pounds, whereas the other one retails for 15 pounds and you get all those shades. Like if someone said to me, which palette would you rather have? I would rather have this one because I can do more with it. So I feel like as usual, this video is already pretty long. So I'm not gonna like spend too much time doing any kind of like intricate eye look or whatever. I think I'm mostly just gonna create a kind of smoky, shimmery green eye look, like just, just standard procedure. I'm gonna do the beauty base side first, but I'm gonna go in with Ivy right on the tip of my brush. And like I said, I'm just gonna try and whiz through this pretty quickly. I'm going to get that right into my crease and onto the outer corner. Last time I checked, this palette was sold out, but like, if you've got Karma or whatever, or you're like signed up to notifications, like keep an eye out for it, because honestly, I am obsessed with this palette. I still need to do some looks with that blue shade up there. I'm really, really loving that. You can see that's blending out really, really nicely and I'm only using just this random fluffy brush. Then using the same brush, because I really, really like applying shimmers with a fluffy brush sometimes. I'm gonna go in with the shade Moss and swirl my brush around there just to kind of pick it up so there's a lot of product on there. I'm just gonna bring that in on the outer corner, sort of like halfway into my eye. Look how freaking nice that looks. Look at, look at it, thank you. Then I'm going in with the shade Breeze, which I've used before and it's stunning. And I'm gonna take that more so on the inner corner. And I might even mix it with that one, like I said, just so I've got something a little bit lighter. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that isn't far off the Melt palette. And then do a little blend. And I can't quite decide if I wanna go on my lower lash line yet. Like look, so simple and I'm just freaking obsessed with it. Can't beat a green eye. So now I'm pretty much gonna do the same with this palette here. So I'm going in with Space Jam. And again, just gonna blend that on at the outer corner. I feel like the Beauty Bay ones are actually a bit more pigmented than the Melt ones. Like the Melt ones are still really, really bloody good. But I do feel like you get a bit more color payoff with the Beauty Bay ones. Look. Like this color is a little bit more rich than the one from Beauty Bay, but I don't actually know which one I prefer. It's just, they're just ever so slightly different green shades, but they're really, is there much of a difference? Like, yeah, in terms of money, to be honest, there's not much in it, is there? And then going with that shade Sweet Tooth, which is probably one of my favorite colors from the palette and drag that across my lid. Um, not gonna lie. The Beauty Bay one is actually quite a bit more pigmented. And then the shade that the Beauty Bay palette doesn't have, but we pretty much already made, I'm going in with the shade Blue Dream, and I'm just gonna put that ever so slightly more on the inner corner, just to kind of lighten it up. Yeah, I'll be honest, I um, I prefer the Beauty Bay one, and like you get more colors and stuff as well, I think. Like, get that. Save yourself 25 quid and get the Beauty Bay palette. Next is a dupe that I almost found like backwards. Like normally I would find the more expensive product and then find something that compares to it. But actually you guys know that the L'Oreal Lash Paradise Mascara has been a favorite of mine for so, so long. It's still one of my most favorite mascaras ever. And I only realized the other day that it is a banging dupe for the Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara. And I tried this out a couple of months ago, I think during a first impressions and I loved it. And no wonder because it's pretty much a bougie version of the L'Oreal one. So I'm gonna do the Lancome on this side. Show you guys in the macro. Yeah, see, it just gives you like really thick, chunky lashes. And then my old fave that honestly, it's, it's a little bit dried up. So we'll have to see how it looks in comparison, but we're going with the L'Oreal one. Even the wands are similar, but I do feel like this one just grabs your lashes slightly better. But yeah, I mean, you can see, do my lashes look that much different? Do they? I think they look nice on both sides. So yeah, if you were wanting to try out the Lancome one, I do recommend it, but this is the same. So then the last dupe that I have for you guys is for the Charlotte Tilbury Kim KW lipstick, which is this one here. And I, um, if you like concealer lips, you will probably like this. Let's do a swatch here. 
it's it's super pink. Like I'm gonna put this on in a second on my bare lips, but I don't have a different like liner to show you guys, like a dupe or anything. But I will ombre it in with some lip liner in a second. But I mean, again, it's they're so so similar. The Kim KW one is a little bit more pinky, whereas this, I didn't even say what this dupe was, I just started using it. It's the Maybelline Purely Nude Matte Lipstick. You guys know I love the Nude Embrace Lipstick, and this one is really, really nice, right in the center of the lips. The Maybelline one, I don't know if you can see with the light and stuff, it is more matte than the Kim KW one. I think that's considered more of like a satin finish or like a cream. And as I'm sure we all know, Charlotte Tilbury ain't cheap. This lipstick will cost you 25 pounds, whereas the Maybelline one will cost you eight. And yeah, when you put either one of those over the top of your lip liner to create an ombre lip, you're not gonna notice a difference. So I'm gonna go and quickly line my lips and probably sort out my hair and stuff. I might come back with like my lower lash line done or something because I do feel a little bit naked under there. And yeah, I'll do my lips or at least the liner and then I'll show you guys how the lipsticks compare, okay? Okay. Okay, as you can see, I put some of that green on my lower lash line, added some mascara, and the lip liner I'm using is the Huda Beauty Lip Contour in the shade Rich Brown. I just kind of put it on the outside and then just blended it in a little bit. And so like I said, I'm just gonna create a little ombre situation. I might need to add a little bit more lip liner in a second because it might look too harsh, but I'm gonna go in with KKW there, or Kim KW, whatever it's called. I'm not gonna blend them out yet, I'm just gonna see how they look on the lips. And then... Oh, come on. I, I don't see any difference, quite frankly, on the lips. But, pat that in. Create a super 90s, Christina, dirty sort of lip. That's my favorite kind of lip. I'll take just a little bit more of that liner on both sides. I want like a bit of foundation lips, but I don't want like year six secondary school foundation lips. And again, just blending. And again, I just tap that in. I'm sorry, but that looks exactly the same. I don't care what anyone else says. The lips, like, it all looks the same. Broken record once again, but it literally all looks exactly the freaking same. As much as I love these products, save your freaking money, guys. Um, the links to all the dupes and to all the products anyway, but the dupes will also be down below. Um, save yourself some money and yeah. This looks exactly the same. This side, this side. It, it actually looks exactly the same. There's no like, oh yeah, but this side's a bit more matte, this side's a little bit more like whatever. They genuinely look exactly the same, even down to the color. I know obviously my foundation wasn't the exact shade here on this side. If I didn't know that I just put two different brands of makeup on my face at the same time, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference, genuinely. And the best bit, Ollie, Ollie, can we get a little drum roll please? This side, 394 pounds, and this side's 120 quid. That's a saving of 274 pounds, if my math's correct. That is a lot of money. I'm gonna be totally honest here, guys. Like, I still love the products on this side of my face. I do, the more pricey ones, and I will still continue to use them sometimes, but even I'm a little bit blown away by this. Like, I was expecting the products individually to be really good dupes, but all together, man, it looks so similar. So save yourself some freaking money, like I said. No shade to the other brands, the more expensive ones, because I do love their stuff, but save yourself like 274 quids and get the dupes, because there really is no difference. I mean it. <laughs> I keep looking at myself, because number one, I'm into this makeup, but number two, <laughs> it's the same. Even I'm kind of shocked. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to work out this well, but yeah. I love dupes. I love finding cheap shit. So yeah, guys. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you think both sides compare. Again, I will do close-ups, macros, and add them all over the top right now. I love how this makeup turned out. Don't get me wrong, it would look insane with lashes, but I really wanted to just see how the products would look, you know, on their own without the help of lashes. Like I said, I feel like I've outdone myself this time. And I said that before I tried the products, now I really feel like I've outdone myself. So if you guys agree, let me know what you think of the makeup, let me know what you think of the dupes, how do you think they're compared to the real deal. Like I said before, if there are any other videos you guys want me to do, any other dupe videos, any other products you want me to dupe, then let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please do give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you do wanna see more of me because I upload all the damn time. And because only half of you guys that actually watch my videos are subscribed, so if you could just take a couple of seconds out your day and if you do want to see more of my videos because I do upload all the damn time which is kind of like three sometimes even four videos a week hit that subscribe button and you'll also be notified when I post if you press the bell but apart from that guys that is it from me I love you guys and I will see you
That was a weird, that was a weird point. See you in the next one. Hey. <laughs> Woo, okay.